Hey. This week we're going to talk about a few different things. First, we're going to talk about this blog post that I posted this week about pair programming and taking turns while you're pair programming. Then we're going to talk about one of my friends and I'll talk about why I'm wearing cat ears in this video. And then we will also have a makeup section. The blog is called, this video blog is called Tech and Makeup. And it's my, my way of sort of consolidating the fact that I am a software engineer, but I also have a life on the side. And, you know, kissing and making up is like all of the stuff from my tech career, which can be really hard sometimes, finding a way to sort of coalesce with the other side of me and finding a way to like make up. So tech and make up. So this week, I wrote a post about taking turns when you're pair programming. It is on Medium, and I will put the link in the description. And there are a lot of different ideas that I wrote about, and I'll mention some of them here. Pair programming is something that I like to do where two people are programming at the same time, and they are kind of sharing a thought process when they do this. One person has their hands at the keyboard and is typing. They are called the driver. And then the other person is sort of looking at what they're doing and uh, helping them along and looking ahead at what needs to happen. And that person's called the navigator. One of the important things when you're doing this is to be able to switch off and to find ways to do that. And I wanted to write about this because one of the things I think people assume, assume about pair programming is that you have to test drive when you're doing this. You do not have to test drive when you're pair programming. You don't have to test drive at all. In fact, I think that there's plenty of successful software in the world that has been written without any test driving or maybe even any tests at all. Probably not much software without tests, but the point I'm trying to make is you just don't have to have TDD. I love TDD. I test drive every day. I'm working with a group right now, Ministry of Velocity, where we are test driving all the time, and I can tell you it's really hard. It takes discipline. It takes a long time to learn. So I'd like to decouple this idea of like you have to be test driving when you're pair programming. You really don't. So I'm really interested in helping people find ways to keep going with pair programming, even if you're like, you're just not in a situation where you can test drive. And believe me, I've been in situations where I wanted to test drive and the team and the situation just would not support it. So if you're pairing, and, or if you're not test driving and you want to pair, there are still like different ways to switch off. Even if you are test driving, like you can use Pomodoro, which is where you use a timer and then you like you focus on code for 25 minutes and then you take a five minute break and then you switch off who is driving. So I've done that. To be honest, I find a timer like for some reason, a timer is just always weird when I'm pairing with someone. Maybe get an hourglass. I have I have hourglasses, and hour, an hourglass is kind of a cool thing to have in your office, and it's also not going to make an annoying noise at you when it's time to switch turns. Another idea is, like, if you have to Google for something, right? Like, it's inevitable. Anytime you're coding, I don't care who you are how advanced you are, you're going to have to Google something. And in fact, like I'm working with some very senior people, right? Like people I consider like miles ahead of me technically. And even they look up simple stuff sometimes totally okay. And you should. And so if you're pair programming, 
maybe that's the hint that you need to switch off. So I'll put the link in the description. You can check it out. There are a lot of different ideas, and I hope people will even come up with more ideas because uh, taking turns is so important, you know, and being able to switch off, it's like one of the big reasons people pair at all is just because you're trying to help other people learn on your team and you want other people to understand what you do and to see what you do. And so, you know, it, it's, it's like you have to switch off. If you don't, you're just forcing someone to sit there and watch you code. And I'm sorry, but that's really boring. So, <laughs> try the different ways of taking turns. Um, and let me know how it goes. I'm really interested to see what people think of this. So that's, that's my rant about taking turns in, tear, in pair programming. And so I'm sure if you're watching this video, you want to know what is up with the ears. Come on, Marlena. Really? Is this your new look? Maybe it is. I kind of like it. And uh, so the reason why I'm wearing these cat ears is because this week I have a friend who is, is, <laughs> she's trying to get through a really horrible programming assignment. Well, maybe not horrible, but time consuming and difficult. And it, it, she's a, so Lynette is a friend who, she, maybe, I don't know if she knows this, but when I was in my school program and I was going through these classes and struggling and trying to get through, I would read her blog and I was so inspired to try and get into a technical conference. And so I actually read about a conference that she presented at and decided, well, let me try to do this. So I submitted to the conference and I got in and I got to go and meet her and, you know, we got to hang out and we've been pretty good friends in software testing and just software. Lynette uh, is on Twitter and she's really fun on Twitter. So Lynette, if you're watching this, I wish you all the best for your programming assignment. You know, you are so smart and I'm totally sure that you are gonna rock this assignment no matter how crappy it is. And you know, sometimes teachers give these ridiculous assignments and everybody fails. I remember my physics classes. Everybody failed. <laughs> everybody failed the test in my physics classes. And sometimes I was the highest grade with a 70. <laughs> and sometimes that's how it goes. Not that that's like a great way to educate people. I think there's a lot that could change with computer science and programming education. But Lynette, if you're watching this, I love you. I know you're going to make it through and it's going to be better on the other side. Um, and I am just so proud of you for buckling down and getting through this shit because it's tough. I know it's tough. So um, I want to wear my cat ears today. Lynette is into cats and all things sparkly and makeup. And I like a lot of those things too. So um, the last thing I'm going to share this week is the eyeshadow that I'm wearing. And I'll come in a little bit so you can see a little bit more of it. This is from a makeup palette that I bought. Uh, it's a little bit pricey, but that's okay. This is called the Natasha Denona <laughs> Sunset Palette. And it is all warm and spicy colors which I got because my eyes are kind of like blue-green in color. And so that kind of color, they're on my eyes and this the colors in this palette are on opposite sides of the color wheel, which means this eyeshadow will really set off my eyes. And these are all of the colors. And so today I'm wearing some of the 
some of the pink, some of the bronze, a little bit of yellow, some orange, some of these browns in here. And I'm going to link the tutorial that I used. The thing that you can't see that I've really had fun with today is this purple eyeliner that I just put on the um, on my bottom waterline and it's in the tutorial which you'll see anyway the the color which the woman in the tutorial I don't think she mentions it is purple stiletto and uh, these eyeshadows are really pricey but they blend super well and one thing that I found with colors and like eyeshadow colors is um, blending and the pigment is really important. So these are all just like the interesting thing is when you put them together you'll get combinations that you didn't expect that look really awesome and that's the fun thing about this. Like if you like dabbling in CSS and you love working with colors in CSS I highly encourage you to um, try out some really interesting eyeshadow palettes because they they will teach you about color and color theory and you know makeup CSS uh, it all it all comes together in the end so I hope you've enjoyed my rambly video and uh, I'll see you next time bye